Hey, have you ever struggled with feeling forgiven? Well, you know what? That's the problem. You're trying to feel forgiveness. In this session, I want to talk to you about the fact that you are forgiven. Let me read you a scripture uh, from so so the book of Psalms. Psalms 103, very famous psalm, verses 1 through 5. It says this. This is uh, King David writing. He says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget none of his benefits. How many of you like benefits? Who pardons, now listen, here, here comes the benefits, who pardons or forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with loving kindness and compassion, who satisfies your years with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagle. So today we're going to talk about the number one benefit that we receive. And by the way, this is like a prophetic psalm that speaks ahead to what Jesus would do on the cross. In other words, who paid for the benefits? The, the, the Bible tells us it is Jesus in his shed blood and his resurrection that paid for the benefits. So we're going to jump right in and talk about this very first benefit, which is God forgives all your iniquities. So let's pray and let's ask the Holy Spirit to speak to us. Before we do that, though, make sure you go to my YouTube channel, which is Fred Kropp, K-R-O-P-P. -P. When you get there, become a subscriber, click the bell and click like, and that way you won't miss out on any of these messages. All right, let's ask the Holy Spirit to speak to us. Lord, we thank you that you are the Spirit. God, you are God with us, Holy Spirit. You're the teacher. You're going to guide us into truth today, and we ask you to guide us into all truth right now. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Can you say amen to that? That's right. So here it is. Uh, you know, we have times where you're like, I, man, I just don't know if God can forgive me. I've done this sin over and over again, and, and I, you know, I ask forgiveness, but is God really forgiving me? Well, the answer is, yes, he is. And so, right in this same psalm, Psalms 103, if you go down a few verses to verse 8 to 12, it says, The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in mercy. He will not always strive with us, nor will he keep his anger against us forever. He has, and listen to this, he has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor punished us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward those who fear him. Listen to this phrase. As far as the east is from the west, so far he has removed our transgressions from us. So here he starts the psalm saying, number one benefit, he forgives all our sins. Then he tells us that he doesn't deal with us according to our sins, but according to his mercy and his loving kindness. Then it says this, doesn't give us an excuse to sin. I'm just telling you, this is what God's, what he does with our sins when we fear the Lord. For as far as the east is from the west, he removes our sins or transgressions from us. So if you go east, you never get west. If you go west, you never get east. In other words, God's saying uh, he completely removes uh, your sin from you. Here's another scripture. So we can just jump right to the New Testament. It tells us in 1 John chapter 1, verse 7, if we walk in the light with God, we have fellowship with him. And then it says, and the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us. Now listen to this from all sin. Can you say that? All sin. So the blood of Jesus doesn't, just doesn't cleanse part of our sins or some of our sins or only the minor sins. It says he cleanses us from all sins. Isaiah prophesies about this uh, in Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18. He says, come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. So God turns your sins into righteousness. That's right. He forgives your sins because he is a God who forgives us. In Jeremiah 30, uh, in Jeremiah 31, we have what's called the new covenant where through the prophet Jeremiah, God announces that he's going to create a new covenant with the house of Israel. And here's what it says. It says, for this is the covenant, God says, that I will make with the house of Israel. This is verses 33 and 34 of Jeremiah 31. After those days, says the Lord, I'll put my laws in their minds and write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No more shall they say, every man teach his neighbor, saying, uh, and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord. They all shall know me from the least 
to the greatest of them, says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and their sin I will remember no more. This is the new covenant which was paid for by the blood of Jesus. You see, the Bible tells us you can't have a covenant without the death of the one who has given the covenant. Jesus died on the cross, sealing the covenant, this new covenant, which is God's mercy because Jesus paid the price. And that's the next point I want to make about this. And that is the reason that God can forgive our sins because see, God is a God of justice. He's not just a God who is love. He is love. He is total love, but he's also a God of justice, which means he has to judge sin. So in order for you and I to be forgiven, the Bible tells us in 1 John chapter 2, verses 1 and 2, that Jesus became our advocate with the Father. He became the propitiation for our sins. I'm going to explain that in just a minute. Let me quote the skirt, this verse to you. Uh, this is 1 John 2, 1 and 2. My little children, uh, John writes, he says, I'm writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, the righteous. He is the propitiation. Now, there's a word we don't use in our everyday language. He is the propitiation for our sins, and not only for ours, but for those of the whole world, the sins of the whole world. The word propitiation means satisfaction. God has to pour out wrath on sin. But when Jesus was on the cross and he cried out, Father, why have you forsaken me? And, uh, and it, was come, it wasn't just the pain of the nails or, or, or the beating that he took. It was that he became sin for us that he might take away our sin. And that's what... Uh, John the Baptist, when he saw Jesus coming, he said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. So God poured his wrath out on Jesus instead of on you. Now, if you don't receive Jesus, you can never receive this benefit. You've got to believe in him. You've got to receive him as the propitiation, the satisfaction. In other words, again, when, Jesus, when God poured his wrath out on Jesus, for our sin, he, the Bible says, he who knew no sin became sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. The Bible says God was satisfied that his, that judgment on sin had been, had been accomplished. But you only benefit from the benefit when you put your faith in Jesus. If you try to live by your own righteousness and you try to be good, well, I'm just going to be good, I'm going to do everything right, it's, you're always going to fail and you'll end up paying the price for your own sins. Uh, again, when Jesus died on the cross in John chapter 19, it says, he said just before he gave up his spirit, it is finished, which means the price has been paid. That's right, the debt has been paid. Come on, you ought to be getting excited now. And then the Bible tells us in 1 John that if we confess our sins, that God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Why is God just in forgiving us our sins? Because Jesus paid the price. Again, 2 Corinthians 5.21, For he made him, Jesus, who knew no sin, to be sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in him. And so here's the good news. It's not whether you feel you're forgiven. It's the fact that when you confess your sins, when you turn to Jesus, forsake trying to be righteous in yourself because the Bible says your righteousness, no matter how good it is, is filthy rags before God. You can never be as righteousness of God, as righteous as God in your own ability, but you can become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus by believing and receiving his salvation, his forgiveness, his mercy, his grace that was paid for to the cross, and he rose again from the dead, having triumphed over not only the devil, but sin on your behalf. I want to pray for you in closing that you understand that you are forgiven. Maybe you've been struggling with guilt, shame, condemnation. I've got good news. If you'll just say, Lord, forgive me of my sin. Uh, come into my life. Make me a new person. You are forgiven, and he does not remember. He's not going to come back and remind you of all your past sins. He's not going to do that. He remembers them no more. So, Father, I pray for everyone watching this video right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you that the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all 
unrighteousness. I thank you for your forgiveness because your word tells us in Ephesians that we are to forgive other people because we have received forgiveness from you. Thank you that you're a forgiving, merciful God. I pray your mercy on each and every one of us and we receive forgiveness and we declare that we are now the righteousness of God in Christ. We thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I hope you're encouraged by this. Hey, I want you to know that the Father loves you, Jesus loves you, and I love you. Be blessed, my brothers and sisters.